U.S. Entry into World War I This is the second video of our World War I unit. In it, we will explore the U.S. policy of neutrality in the first years of the war and the reasons why it finally entered the conflict in April 1917. Isolationism In his farewell address, George Washington advised the country not to join foreign alliances and to avoid entanglements in European conflicts. Since then, the United States had followed a policy of isolationism, remaining apart from the affairs of other countries. As the war engulfed Europe, President Wilson declared that the United States would remain neutral. President Wilson won re-election on the slogan, he kept us out of war. It was clear that the American public favored neutrality. After the great efforts to keep America neutral, the United States finally entered the war in 1917. Why did this happen? Germany's negative image. In 1871, Germany had become a unified country, embarking on a policy of expansion and militarism. Americans detested German militarism and were shocked when Germany invaded Belgium, a neutral nation, in a deliberate violation of international law. German wartime atrocities were widely reported in the American press. True stories were exaggerated, and accounts of German soldiers cutting children's hands and slicing babies with bayonets were fabricated. The American public was horrified with Germany's handling of the war. Allied propaganda and Germany's submarine warfare would further damage Germany's image. At the same time, America's ties to the Allies became stronger. Even though many Americans had German ancestry, most Americans had personal sympathies and ancestral ties to Great Britain. The British blockade of the Central Powers effectively isolated Germany. American trade with Germany dropped to historic lows. At the same time, trade with Britain and France increased fourfold, and American bankers lent over $2 billion to the Allied powers. The United States became the main source of arms, capital, food, and supplies for Britain and France. The British Blockade and German U-Boats British forces set up a blockade to prevent food and arms from reaching Germany. The blockade itself was a violation of international law. <coughs> the British placed explosive mines and set up a perimeter around the North Sea, effectively blockading Germany but also affecting neutral countries like Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. All ships crossing the Atlantic were forced to stop in Britain before entering the North Sea. President Wilson protested these violations, but continued to trade with Britain. U.S. merchant ships traveled in convoys, or groups of vessels escorted by battleships. The blockade caused a shortage of food and fertilizers in Germany. Thousands of Germans starved to death. The German naval fleet was not powerful enough to challenge the British Navy, but instead Germany had a strong fleet of U-boat or submarines. Germany used its U-boat fleet to retaliate and to set up a submarine counter blockade of Britain. German U-boats were quick and small but could not provide traditional warnings before attacks or even rescue survivors, 
a clear violation of international law. Allied ships entering the blockade were attacked and sunk by U-boats. Even though American ships were not initially targeted, American citizens traveling on Allied ships were affected. The Sinking of the Lusitania, May 1915 On May 7, 1915, a German U-boat shot a torpedo at close range, sinking the Lusitania. A British passenger ship covering the route New York to Liverpool. The Lusitania sank in a matter of minutes, and passengers had no time to get into the lifeboats. More than a thousand passengers perished, including 128 Americans and 94 children. American newspapers widely reported on this disaster stirring up public indignation and anti-German feelings. Germany officially claimed that the Lusitania was secretly carrying weapons and supplies headed for Britain. President Wilson sent a strong protest to Germany, but refused to declare war on Germany over this incident. The Sussex Pledge, 1916 after the German U-boats attacked a French passenger ship, the Sussex, President Wilson threatened to break off diplomatic relations with Germany. Germany responded with the Sussex Pledge, vowing not to sink any more passenger or merchant ships without prior warning or making provisions for passengers. German Unrestricted Submarine Warfare January 1917. The British blockade had worsened economic conditions in Germany. Germans were desperate and suffering from the lack of food and supplies. In January 1917, Germany officially declared that it would sink all ships, neutral or allied, traveling to Britain. German leaders knew that this measure would probably bring the United States into war, but assumed that France and Britain would already have been defeated by the time U.S. could effectively intervene. The Zimmerman Telegram, March 1917 British intelligence intercepted a diplomatic telegram from the German Foreign Minister Arthur Zimmermann to the Mexican government. In it, Zimmermann promised Mexico the return of New Mexico, Arizona, and Texas if Mexico were to join the war on Germany's side against the United States. The telegram was published in American newspapers in March 1917 generating pressure for U.S. involvement. A Declaration of War Even after Germany's announcement of unrestricted submarine warfare and the Zimmerman note, President Wilson still hoped to keep America's neutrality and avoid war. In March 1917, Germany sank several unarmed American merchant vessels. Wilson then addressed Congress and obtained a declaration of war in early April 1917. President Wilson insisted on American ideals and declared war not on Germany, but on the authoritarian German leaders. The war was not only an effort to defend the freedom of the seas, but one to establish the ultimate peace and to promote democracy throughout the world. United States entered World War I just as Russia had to surrender to deal with civil unrest and the Bolshevik Revolution. America was not prepared for war and had to start a process of mobilization.